Greetings, and welcome to Freedom Quest. Our world is quickly becoming a horrific mishmash of deception and misinformation. And sadly, most of the people insisting on regulating the misinformation, are the very source of the majority, of that misinformation. They, are the censors. They seek control, because control, is power. And they do love their power. If they can control the narrative, they can control the people. And if they can control the people, they can control the outcome. And the outcome they seek, is simply to stay in power. It is a vicious cycle of deception, manipulation, and betrayal. Most of the time that you see this type of devious premeditated manipulation, is in the political realm. Their venues of control are mostly the legacy media, and almost all of the internet. Almost, but thankfully, not all. But a rather surprising venue of control, is in the scientific arena. Many scientists are very vocal and outspoken atheists. Richard Dawkins comes to mind. He is supposed to be some sort of renowned biologist. But all he is actually known for, is his vicious and unfounded books on neo-atheism. But like most atheists, all of Dawkins' arguments are nothing more than straw man rhetoric, made up from vacuous smoke and mirrors. A well-informed freshman in high school, could easily dismantle the atheistic fairy tales of naturalism. Atheism is a religion, and naturalism, is their theology. Naturalism is the atheistic hypothesis, that all things are natural. In other words, nothing is supernatural, most notably, God. Most naturalists don't just reject the existence of God, they seem to actually hate him. Which is rather ironic when you think about it. If there is no God, why do you so vehemently hate God? Me thinks that thou protesteth too much. So what does science and atheism, have to do with misinformation? That's a great question. One that deserves not only your undivided attention, but should actually be the very focal point of your existence. Because if there is no God, then you should have undeniable proof of your atheistic worldview. But on the flip side, if God is actually the creator of the universe, you best get to know him. Get to know him, really really well, don't you think? So let's just take a moment to look at the actual facts. Not the bullcrap rhetoric they taught you in public school. I'm talking rock solid reality. Mankind has believed in the creator, Father God, since the beginning of our inception. But these bonehead atheists come along, and insist that there is no God, that everything happened, by chance. Oh really? First of all, God is not just the creator of the universe, he is my best friend. I know him as well as I know any human being. He is loving, kind, compassionate, and merciful. And he proved that on the cross. For you to say that he does not exist, would be like me telling you, that your own mother doesn't exist. And, she never did. But then how did you get here, if you had no mother? Well according to your fairy tales of naturalism, you must have evolved, from a rock. Oh shoot, bro, did I just say that out loud? You darn right I did. And it sounded embarrassingly stupid, don't you think? That's right, I honestly think that you did not have a mother, you evolved from a rock. Now we all know that is not possible, but that's what the atheistic naturalists believe, and teach. They just say that it took time. It took a long, long time, for you to evolve from a rock. But evolve from a rock, you did. At least according to the atheists. They call the first step of that process, a biogenesis. A biogenesis is the atheistic fable, that life on earth, created itself, from non-living chemicals. That's right, step right up folks, and watch non-living chemicals do their magic. Not only form the cell membrane and organelles, these non-living chemicals are so intelligent, that they even coded the first DNA, all by themselves, with absolutely no supernatural intervention. And don't be bothered by the fact that a biogenesis is impossible, or you will ruin the fairy tale. But since a biogenesis is the foundation of Darwinian evolution, and evolution is obviously science, then certainly a biogenesis has been observed, repeated, and verified, right? I mean real science is observable, repeatable, and verifiable. So that means if a biogenesis is real science, then it most certainly has been scientifically verified, hasn't it? Oh I am so sorry to burst you atheistic bubble my friend, but a biogenesis has never ever been observed, repeated, or verified. 
not in nature, or even in our billion dollar laboratories. And trust me, it gets worse. Even if you had one of these magic cells form right before your eyes, you have an even bigger obstacle to overcome. Self-replication. I once asked a biology major, how long did it take the first cell to learn to reproduce? He said probably millions of years. So I asked, what was the process? He said evolution. So I asked him, but doesn't evolution supposedly happen during reproduction? If the cell could not reproduce, then it could not evolve the ability to reproduce. He was absolutely astonished that he had never thought about that fact. But then he immediately hypothesized an RNA world. So I asked him, where did the coded information come from in the RNA, and again, he was completely baffled. And therein lies the problem of misinformation. People accept what they are told, at face value. And why is that? They trust their teachers. The problem is that your teacher, trusted his teacher, who trusted his teacher, and so on. The reality is that you should not trust anyone. Verify everything. Take no one at their word. Except God. God is perfect. He cannot lie. And he has said, in the beginning, he created the heavens, and the earth. And ultimately, he even created you. He knitted you together, in your mother's womb. That is unless of course, you evolved, from a rock.